Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Shrikan Sukumar from Systems and Control, IIT Bombay. So we are almost at the end of our lectures for week three. And uh, we have um, sort of uh, learned over the course of this week, some nice tools to analyze algorithms that will potentially drive systems such as that we see in our background, right? So what we were doing until last time <clears throat> was basically um, look at a few more examples of um, you know these uh, particular stability properties that we had defined right so we saw a few more illustrative examples so i really hope that uh, all of you got a pretty fair idea of what kind of um, systems are uh, going to have what kind of properties all right and and what do these properties sort of um, mean uh, for that particular system, right? So we we defined stability, attractivity, and and several notions of asymptotic and exponential stability, right? We also saw at the end of uh, the last lecture the particular notion of linear system stability. So basically, how does um, the stability uh, definitions in terms of epsilons and deltas that we defined, how does it, uh, you know, become specific, more specific for linear systems? So we sort of, uh, you know, saw, had a brief overview of that. Of course, we didn't really prove uh, these results as such. So I just gave you a little bit of a sketch of, you know, what you have in linear system stability. So today we jump on to <clears throat> a new set of lectures. Again, like I said, don't worry about, uh, you know, when we say week four and so on, although we are not into week four lectures. This is more for the purpose of, you know, the homework assignments, right? So we will uh, sort of uh, go forward and delve into the week four lectures, depending on how our schedule is, because as the lectures become more involved, we will need more and more time. Right. So therefore, uh, I don't want to delay uh, getting into week four lectures any further. Right. <clears throat> so as the outline states, we discuss function classes and Lyapunov theorems uh, in this particular set of lectures. Right. With a designated week four lectures. Uh, so you'll already start. Right. So now, what is the motivation? Right. What is the motivation? So we already saw several stability definitions we saw a few examples where we uh, did conclude uh, what kind of stability properties a system might have um, however what uh, we found was that in all these cases we were required to uh, find the solution or in some cases of course we made a call on stability based on face plane portraits but to be honest uh that cannot be considered a final sort of um, uh, you know final technical answer on whether a system is stable or asymptotically stable or not because a lot of times in face plane portrait again a face plane portrait is based on a numerical method right you you yeah you sort of take a software and you sort of draw these face plane portraits right so it's based on a numerical method so it's very 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 possible in uh, numerical methods to uh, uh, ignore or forget to uh, you know consider certain problematic initial conditions and you might actually end up uh, uh, claiming something about uh, the stability of a system which actually does not hold true right so the biggest issues with these epsilon delta definitions of stability is the usability 
right? So it's very difficult to actually use these definitions. So <clears throat> that is the motivation for studying these Lyapunov theorems that we are going to look at now. Okay, so Lyapunov theorems really make our life easy in terms of uh, concluding stability of nonlinear systems, and we will very quickly uh, get to that. But before we even start on to Lyapunov stability theorems, or what is also called the Lyapunov direct method, uh, we will of course need to define um, you know a few. Um, preliminary class of functions okay so these are rather um, powerful class of functions right so there are three right so first is uh, called a class k function so what is a class k function um, a function again so these are all scalar valued functions so they they um, take values in non negative reals and map to non negative reals okay so this is required for all these functions right so they take values in non negative reals and they map it to also non negative reals so a function phi of this kind is said to be of class k if it satisfies three properties first it is continuous right second it is strictly increasing and third it is zero at zero okay. the zero at zero so this is what is a class k function okay so we have of course given examples of what is a class k function okay so if f x equal to x so so let's be a little bit more precise so so examples I'll sort of write it again uh f x or let's use the notation that we are in fact using here for x in non negative reals is a class k function okay or if you want to make it you know much more easy to understand so phi x is x squared with x in r plus is also class k function so notice that i keep saying x is in r plus because I, I can, I, the way I've defined it, this map has to be from non negative reals to non negative reals. Okay. The argument also has to be a non negative real number. Okay. So this is important. The next example we consider is, uh, you know, I don't want to number these because I have sort of given a few different examples. The next example that I give uh, that is stated here is 1e minus x for again x in r plus. Okay, so how do I know that this is a sorry, this is 1e minus x, not 1e e to the 1 minus e to the power minus x. How do I know this is a class k function? First of all, continuity is obvious, right? How do I know it's a class k function? Just compute phi prime of x. Okay, it is simply going to be e to the power minus x, yeah, which is always greater than zero, yeah, for all x less than infinity. So, which is basically saying that x is in R plus. Okay, non-negative reals does not include infinity. Okay, infinity is not included in non-negative reals or in reals for that matter. Okay, so that's how real. Uh, numbers are defined all right so this is of course uh, you can see that this is a positive derivative and therefore it's obvious that it is a strictly increasing factor so you can um, have many you know different such examples yeah so this is what is a class k function okay so what is a class l function it's sort of the opposite okay it's sort of the opposite a function phi is class l again with the same uh, domain and range um, if it is again continuous strictly decreasing and the initial condition has to be finite some finite initial condition okay so so one example again of such a function is 1 over x plus 1 okay so this is a class l function why this is continuous because uh, again, this is uh, 
assuming x is in r plus right we are already assuming that x is in r plus right so therefore non-negative reals therefore x can the least value x can take is zero and it is <clears throat> the denominator is non-zero there so it's in fact a continuous function yeah it's a continuous function so it's continuous it's strictly decreasing is obvious again because as i increase x the denominator is becoming larger and therefore the fraction is becoming smaller okay then the initial value is of course finite in fact the initial value and that is it if you plug x equals zero it's just one okay so this is the class l function okay so we have class k and then class l it's sort of um opposite seems like it's opposite but but i would in fact put a nice note here if phi is in class k this is the notation for saying that a function is in a particular class this does not imply i hope you understand that minus phi in class l this does not imply this and that i hope that's clear because <clears throat> why because just look at this minus phi becomes a map from r plus to r minus right okay so this is not even allowed so this is not even allowed right not allowed okay the only candidates that are allowed are in fact uh, your functions which are uh, mapping from non-negative reals to non-negative reals okay so negative of phi is not a class l function if phi is a class k function all right excellent excellent great great so good so we know that uh, let's look at the next class of functions this is again another very important class of functions and that is the class kr function all right this is the class kr function okay so function phi again non-negative reals to non-negative reals let's always remember that so we don't make a mistake so this is of class k r if again it's at least class k first of all you want it to be class k and further phi of r goes to infinity as r goes to infinity okay so it's first of all it's class k and it should go to infinity as r goes to infinity so just to distinguish one of the examples we considered as a class k function phi x equals 1 minus e minus x Right, with x in non-negative reals is not class kr why if you sort of try to make a picture of this function right so if you make a plot of this what this function looks like okay um uh, what happens on the x-axis i have of course uh, x itself and on the y-axis i have phi of x phi of zero as you can see is exactly one uh, so five zero is exactly zero right and i will what i will do is i will draw the line corresponding to one because um, as x goes to infinity minus x goes to minus infinity this goes to zero so phi tends to one as x goes to infinity okay so the thing is the function is in fact increasing if i may i mean of course i cannot do justice to this very much the phi continues to increase okay? but it hits at most one never crosses one Right? never cross this one so this is not a class kr function okay so this is a rather critical distinction okay so this is not a class kr function on the other hand the other examples that we considered like phi x equals x squared x is in r plus 
So this phi is of course class KR. So it should be obvious to you that any function uh, which is so again I will put this as a note just so note phi in class KR implies phi in class K. Yeah. So if a function is in class KR then it belongs to class K for sure. But it doesn't hold otherwise. Yeah, the other way around doesn't hold because we just saw this example, which is a class K function. Yeah, so this is a class K function. Let me reiterate that. So phi is in class K and not class KR. Okay, so hold this way, not the other way. Right, so class KR function is a um, stronger. It's a stronger requirement. So there are less number of functions in class KR all right, than class K. So class right, right. So class KR is actually a subset of the class K functions right? because class K is a requirement of being a class KR function. So these are of course rather important function classes. Right? So anyway, this, this we already mentioned last time too. Okay, we did talk about this. You know, in the earlier lectures also, right? We do require that our equilibrium is at the origin. Okay. If not, as always, we do a change of coordinates. We already spoke about this again last time and the time before. Um, so whenever we <clears throat> uh, have an equilibrium which is non-zero, we just do a simple change of coordinates. It's always possible. So this is not a very uh, stringent requirement as such. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So using these notions of um, class K and class KR and so on, um, we now talk about definiteness of functions. Okay. So before we go into definiteness of functions, if you remember, just uh, remind Reminder definiteness of matrices. Yeah, I hope all of you remember. Uh, we sort of had a short discussion, or whatever, we stated a few things on symmetric matrices, and then we um, talked about conditions under which a symmetric matrix is positive definite. There were several equivalent conditions. So A equals A transpose, of course, A in sum N by N. Uh, a is positive definite. So this is the notation. If any of these conditions hold, right? Any of these conditions hold. First is that it is, uh, uh, you know, first is that it is uh, x transpose ax strictly positive for all x in Rn, x not equal to the zero vector. The next one is that uh, all, so I'll write it in shorthand because you've already done this. Next was that eigenvalues of A are strictly positive. Okay. All principal minors have positive determinant. Okay. So these are sort of the conditions under which a matrix is considered to be positive definite okay so so positive determinants like i said right so this is i will just expand this all principal minors have positive determinant okay so i want you to keep this in mind when we talk about positive definiteness or definiteness of functions now we are talking about definiteness of functions okay excellent excellent 
so uh, what is the uh, you know sort of the first uh, such definition all right uh, we want to uh, take a look at that okay right so the first definition is that of a positive definite function right so if you have a scalar valued function from r cross br to r okay, so what is this r cross br and all that right so i i think we already know the notation so br is basically uh, the set of all x in rn such that norm x is less than r so this is the ball of radius r around the origin right notice that origin has been assumed to be our equilibrium right and therefore uh, uh, we sort of measure distances from the origin so the ball of radius r is around the origin okay? so we don't specify the center so what is this vr cross br goes to r and all that before i even you know sort of uh, go forward with the rest of the discussion so here r represents time this represents the a sort of uh, ball around the origin of the states okay so this v function takes time and states and gives me a real number right so 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 this is the very specific kind of functions for which we are discussing definiteness right we are not discussing definiteness for some arbitrary functions right we are discussing definiteness for very very specific kind of functions right which map time and which map states to some real value okay right so what do we require we of course require that this function is continuous it's already scalar value is obvious because i map to reals right then we require that the function take zero value for all time as long as the state is zero so if i plug in the state value to be zero that is origin zero means the origin of course so if the state value is zero that is if i'm at the origin then this scalar valued function definitely gives me zero irrespective of what time i choose okay irrespective of what time we choose right um, the second important point is that there should exist a class k function phi such that this function vtx dominates this class k function of phi x uh, sorry of norm x right notice this notice the argument norm is always non negative yeah remember the argument of a class k function also has to be non negative it definitely maps into non negative values but the argument itself has to be non negative so this class k function takes as its argument the norm of the states which we know to be non negative always okay so so uh, so phi in there has to exist such a function phi such a function phi such that the vtx right dominates this function phi of the norm of the x for all t and for all x in br so notice so remember this this function phi so um is a class k function in the norm of the states okay so so the important thing is if these two conditions are satisfied along with continuity then we say that the function v is positive definite and it is denoted by v greater than 0 i mean just like we denote for matrices a greater than uh, just like we denote for matrices a greater than 0 we have a similar notation for functions also we say v is greater than 0 okay the other important point that i really want to highlight is that notice that the class k function the way we have defined right is it's continuous it's strictly increasing for all values of the argument and it is zero at zero okay so it is continuous strictly increasing for all values of the argument and it is zero at zero this is important right 
but we need the function v to only dominate this function okay we do not particularly require v to be also strictly increasing okay this condition does not first of all uh, does not imply v is strictly increasing okay we just need to dominate a strictly increasing function also we need the domination to happen only for a small ball around the origin we don't need the function v to dominate this class k function for all time okay so let's look at a sort of picture and and we will see what is the significance of this br in v. I mean the br is just some local domain around the origin okay if you remember uh, our stability definitions right also have uh, you know the attractivity property if you may um, also has this epsilon delta right where this delta could depend on initial time or not but if you have initial conditions starting in this delta ball then you converge to the origin it doesn't say that you can start at any initial condition and go to the origin okay so so that was also a local notion so that local notion is being sort of going to be portrayed using this br ball br okay so we don't need this function to dominate a class k function for all states and okay definitely we want it to dominate for all time yeah the time thing is not flexible we need this domination to happen for all time because notice that the right hand side doesn't contain any time argument at all okay the left hand side contains time but the right hand side does not contain any time argument right therefore this has to hold for all time no doubt about it but it doesn't need to hold for all values of the state okay so if i again if i try to make this uh, sort of a picture right uh, here i have x right so this is sort of right so suppose i have some you know some kind of a class k function then let me make it very simple right suppose i have uh, like a linear class k function something very simple okay so this is my phi of norm x in this case x is a scalar so norm x is you know absolute value of x but let's not worry about it i will stick to the notation to be consistent here right now i want my vx to dominate this function of course notice that uh, v at 0 is 0 so obviously i have to still start at 0 then i can do things like this okay i can do things like this right so until if i may again so so let me try to pick another color right so until here Right, which is sort of um, say r right so until here until r i'm just calling it v of x because um I have not shown the time argument. I mean, I can even do that, but you know, let's say this is v t of x, but the but it becomes complicated. Okay, so I'm just going to call v x. I'm going to say that there is no time argument involved in this particular case, right? Why am I saying that? Is because if I put the time argument, then I'll have to draw another axis and show how the function also evolves with time. So um, instead, I'll just say it's a function of just the state x. So even if v is just a function of x and time argument doesn't appear at all, it and that is also allowed. By the way, that's also allowed. 
right so if it happens so even in that case i don't really need my v to be strictly increasing okay i need it to dominate this class k function only and that too not necessarily for all values of the state but until a particular you know until the norm is less than r right i need the domination only until a particular point okay and if this happens this function vx so they in this case v is said to be positive definite in this case v is said to be positive definite right so obviously as we have mentioned br is an open ball around origin and positive definiteness is related to the notion of asymptotic stability okay in the lyapunov theorems positive definiteness is going to be directly connected to asymptotic stability okay so um, what would be simple examples so simple example would be say you know i know that i mean i'll start to construct a simple example from the class k function itself so i know that 1 over norm x plus 1 is a class k function right so if, if say x is in r2 right then i can use the you know 2 norm if this is x1 square plus x2 squared right and in fact i will use a squared here that's fine so this i know is a class k function right this i know is a class k function right so so if i sort of uh, you know sort of work backwards and if i say my vtx is something like uh, i'm just introducing some time argument here um i can say something like e to the power t divided by norm x squared plus one and this it should be obvious to you that this is greater than equal to uh let's see yeah so in fact i can just simply take it as t right why make it more yeah so this is greater than equal to phi norm x right? this is greater than equal to phi norm All right, and so this is obviously a uh, v is a positive definite function, okay, because it dominates a class k function. So this is a valid example of a class k function. Sorry, this is a valid example of a positive definite v function. All right. So anyway, so I think this is um, we we figured out some important things here. Um, so what we have sort of uh, seen today is a few different function classes, right? Which are going, to, which are critical in talking about definiteness. And uh, from there, we uh, talked about the first notion of definiteness, which is positive definite. And um, we saw an example also of what is a positive definite function. Um, so we will continue again uh, in this vein in the upcoming sessions and we will uh, progress on slowly towards stating the uh, lyapunov direct method or the lyapunov stability theorems all right that's it folks thank you mm -hmm.